Today we're going to look at a new combination smoke and carbon monoxide detector by Xsense. This is a 10-year battery sealed unit. We're going to take it apart and see how it works. Today we're going to look at a product that everyone needs in their house. Especially if you have any appliances that burn a fossil fuel or wood, like a gas fireplace or a gas furnace or a gas range. Everyone needs smoke detectors, that's for sure. Smoke detector saves lives. Carbon monoxide detector if you burn fossil fuels to heat your home. So oil, gas, propane, cook with gas, or even a wood fireplace. Anything that combusts will produce carbon monoxide, which is a toxic, colorless, odorless, poisonous gas. Now that we've got that spiel out of the way, I have a new combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarm by Xsense to show you guys. And I'll be putting this in service in my house, like everything else, I test. If I can get the package open. We'll take a look at this unit and see how it's built and how it works. I don't, know, I don't know that I'll be able to test the carbon monoxide because I don't really feel like filling my house up with carbon monoxide to test it, but uh, basically it attaches to the ceiling or wall with some screws and anchors. It's going to be battery powered. I don't know that we really need to read the instruction book. They are generally pretty, pretty simple and how these operate. We write the date on here because they are only good for X number of years. I believe it's 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, sealed, battery operated. So you don't even have to change a battery on this. Once you activate it, it should be good for 10 years and it's going to tell you when it uh, has expired. They all have uh, a built-in expiry timer on them. It will tell you when they are, uh, when they're bad, when they're time to replace them. If we look at the technology, it's a photoelectric smoke detector, which means it responds quicker to smoldering type fires before they burst into flames, such as a couch or a bed that's smoldering because someone dropped a cigarette or something lit onto them. Um, the CO is electrochemical, which is typically a little module that sits inside the unit. They all work the same way. And it, it has a, I guess a platinum wire and it heats it up and, and uh, causes a chemical reaction with uh, carbon monoxide. Product life is 10 years. Uh, the unit here was, was just manufactured in uh, October 25th of this year, so it's good for you know 10 years. Uh, I'll be putting this in service and don't expect to have any issues with it. Uh, it's for indoor use only, of course. Don't explain. Don't expose to rain or moisture. Uh, obviously, you're not going to put something like this in your garage. I know some people say, I'll put a carbon monoxide detector in my garage. Well, if you start your car, you're going to create carbon monoxide, which could set the alarm off, although it generally won't because carbon monoxide detectors take time to activate. They typically take between 4 and 15 minutes once the carbon monoxide is detected, and then they will sound off four beeps. Right, so, and it would flash, see here, power tells you the alarms. Uh, three beeps is a smoke and four beeps is um, carbon monoxide when the alarm goes off. As I suggested before, end of life. Okay, it has an automatic end of life detector. So after 10 years, the alarm will deliver two beeps and the LED, LED indicator will flash yellow twice every 30 seconds. This is an end of life signal. They can be silenced for three days. And after that, it can only be used for 30 days. After 30 days, the end of life signal could not be silenced. It's just going to continue to beep to tell you it's time to replace it. I had one do that. My old my old uh, CO detector started beeping after 10 years. And the one I've got now was one that uh, I don't think you've even shown it, but uh, it was one that one of my wife's clients had, and she thought it wasn't working, so she told her to go buy a new one. And, brought it to me to test and how I tested it was I stuck it in my garage and I fired up my Harley and after about uh, five minutes of the of the engine idling uh, it did set off the seal alarm so I know that it works uh, anyway um, I'm sure I probably burned up some of its life doing that but um, it again has an indicator that tells you when it's when it's uh, it's it's reached the end of its life uh, LCD display will give you an indication of any parts per million of carbon monoxide that is detected and it'll detect the concentration and basically 
this is all the, the, the uh, features. Low battery indicates that the battery is low. Error and end. It'll say end at the end of its life. And that tells you it's time to deactivate it, which you, um, which you do by turning this little screw down here. You have to remove this, this plastic cover, which prevents you from pushing the switch to deactivate. But once you deactivate it, it kills the power. And uh, I'm sure we could probably pop this thing open and just see, have a little look around and see what's inside it because I do detect that there are screws here. So let's open it up. I haven't even activated the unit yet. I will be able to test this for smoke because I'll just, I'll just create a fire. We'll burn some paper in a, in a jar, create some smoke, and that should detect the smoke and set this thing off. I just voided the warranty, by the way. Before I pop the cover off, I'll just mark the uh, orientation so I know what goes where. Okay, cover comes off just like that. Here's the battery that's on here. It's actually two of them. They look like they're just uh, CR123s that have got... Uh, leads spot welded onto them so that you can't change them because again um, it's not so much the battery that's going to go dead it's uh, for the CO detector it's the electrochemical element that detects carbon monoxide so here's our our sensing chamber there's probably another one oops that was the deactivation switch. When you turn it on, you are flipping the switch on and then there's a, another position that you will flip it to to shut it off. And it probably just locks in this, this cabinet here. I would think that when you turn this to the, when you turn this to the off position, this is how it works. It's off and when you, when you flip it on, you just go to the first step Right, it's off. It's off now. To turn it on, you just flip the switch. It goes to that position. You can't go to the off position unless you peel this plastic back, and that'll allow you to turn it to the disable. And this little pointer would then point to deactivate. And all it does is it just moves the switch, moves the switch first to the on position, and then to the deactivate. And the deactivate is probably just the same as turning it off because it, it won't let you back it up, right? When it's in the on position, the little catch here will prevent it from backing up to the off position. So it's a one-way on, and then the next position is off. And actually, to turn it off, you have, to, you have to crank it with a screwdriver because there's a little plastic tab here that you have to break. So that prevents you from accidentally deactivating it when you didn't intend to. And I'm sure all this, the carbon monoxide detectors work the same way. You can turn it on like that, but then this little plastic tab here would have to be broken. You'd do that by putting a screwdriver in there and cranking it to the deactivate, which would then turn this switch to the next position. Let's take a look under this circuit board here. I would imagine this is probably just a switch and you could Turn it back on if you opened it up and move the switch back to the on position. You could turn it back on. But what I don't know is, is that deactivate a, does it do something? That's why we're going to look. Does it, can, does it complete a circuit that permanently deactivates something on here or does it just turn it off? This is the Figaro uh, TCS 5402, that is the electrochemical carbon monoxide detector right there, all in one unit. And here's our, here's our switch. And does that switch do something on the deactivate side? It looks like it might. Maybe not. It might just turn the power off.
let's measure these voltages on these batteries here because these are the lithium cells 3.2 and 3.2 it's called a Figaro T GS5042 electrochemical carbon monoxide detector Interesting. Very interesting. The reset button is right down here. So it resets it for silencing the alarm. And this is the display board. But that's the, the actual alarm itself. And the detection chamber is right here. Okay, so let's just throw this thing together and I'm going to activate the alarm and uh, we'll put it together, activate it, and um, test it out for smoke. That's about all I can test it for. Can't test it for CO because I don't have any way of making a bunch of CO. I guess I, I, guess I could take it into the, the other garage and start up the Harley and sit it behind there, but I'm sure that the battery is dead on the bike. It hasn't been started for a few months. And it's off the road until the spring at the earliest but it did test my other one okay that goes on like that this little cover goes on like this it's interesting it has a cover to keep the uh, detector and the rest of the electronics separated you'll notice that there are channels in the cover that's designed to direct air into and this cover sits on here like this the smoke and CO chambers sure I'm in the, the off position and we'll activate the alarm. Watch everything fire up. Goes together like that. To turn the detector on we're just gonna flick that switch up like that. It lights up green. Power, yellow fault, red alarm. Move to fresh air and call 911. It's just booting up now. The light is flashing all the different colors of the rainbow here. Red, yellow, and green. And there we go. And this display should go out. I can't see the LED staying on for more than a few seconds because um, it would drain the battery, of course, faster. Uh, let's see, it says after the unit is fully mounted, the mounting bracket will automatically be activated. So it looks like when you uh, mount the unit in the bracket, it would turn the switch on. Ah, yes, it does actually. When you turn it like that, it will automatically activate it. I turned the switch on, but as you can see, there's a little cam right there. So you didn't even have to turn it. It says here. Attention, once assembled, the device can no longer be switched off. You want to bet? You take it apart and switch it off. Anyway, once it's put together, you put it on the bracket and you just turn it on like that. It will activate the unit automatically. And uh, that's it. It's good for 10 years. Test it. You press the test button. And it will light up. And it tells you the battery condition. That's the that's the CO alarm is testing now. So three beeps is smoke, four beeps is uh, CO, and then it says pass. It just passed all the tests. That's all that there is to do with this. You test it once a week. Okay, um, I guess I can create some, create some smoke, and uh, we can see if it will detect it. enough to get that going there we go where we have smoke where we have fire we have smoke maybe it, remember it is photoelectric so they do take a few seconds there we go and it's detected the smoke
That was pretty quick. Get the air. Got to clear the air in here. Oh, I hit the silence button. That'll quieten it down. Okay, so that's how quick it responds to a little bit of smoke from a little piece of paper that I burned. It'll probably go off again if I'm not careful. I gotta air this place out now, it stinks. Uh, that's it, that's all I can show you on this one. I'm gonna mount it inside the house and I'll have another smoke detector, CO detector. And yeah, I do have a, I do run a heat pump here, so it's not like I'm burning fossil fuels to heat the house, but I do have gas fireplaces and I do have a gas range, so for that reason, a CO detector is still important for me to have in my house. I'll put a link for this in the description. Thanks for watching.